Morning, Thomas here. Before we get started, I just want to pray for us. I want to pray for you too right now. So Father, we just come to you right now, Lord Jesus, and we um, thank you for your goodness that you love us so much, Lord Jesus. And I thank you for the hands that make the prayer shores. And so I pray for blessings on them right now. And so I pray you bless our time this morning in Jesus' name. All right, so this morning I have a, uh, have a story I want to tell. But uh, before I tell the story, I want to read a scripture. And uh, in Psalms 30, in verse, actually starting in verse 10, David, he says, he says, Hear, O Lord, and that word Lord is I am. You remember uh, Moses at the burning bush? Moses asked God, what's your name? And God said, I am who I am. And so that Lord, when you see it capitalized, it means I am. And it says, and be gracious to me, O I am. Be my helper. Helper means the Holy Spirit, right? Inside of us, in us. It says, you have turned for me my mourning into dancing. You have loosed my sackcloth and girded me with gladness, that my soul may sing praise to you and not be silent. O oh Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. And David, he knows that it's a forever thing. Um, and so a couple of words in here have deep meaning. So turned, he says, I have turned for me, you have, Turned for me my mourning into dancing. So turned, you remember Jesus, he turned the water into wine, meaning as a miracle is happening. You remember uh, Moses and the staff, he threw it down and it turned into a snake and he grabbed it and it turned back into the staff. And when um, Moses, the river Nile, it the water turned into blood. It's something of a miracle state. So this is talking, this, it's not about just, it's a, a miracle that's happening. He's turning my mourning into dancing. And what's that mourning? You know, we talk about, because I'm doing lots of grief um, work now. And so the grief that's on the inside, how it comes out is in the mourning and the crying or talking about it. And so he's talking about deep grief here. And so we now in our, even in our community, oh my gosh, are experiencing deep grief. And so Jesus, God, he's saying, I'm turning your mourning into dancing. And he says, I have loosened my, you have loosened my sackcloth. So he didn't take the sackcloth off. He doesn't take the circumstances away. He loosened it and girded me with gladness. And so that my soul may sing praise to you. And so, okay, so in this, God is saying that, hey, I'm turning your mourning into dancing, meaning that he's bringing comfort. And I'm reminded of 2 Corinthians, and in chapter 1, he talks about, he says, Blessed be the God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, the God of all comfort, all comfort. He said, who comforts us in all our afflictions, whatever they are, all of our losses, our abuses, all these things, he's comforting us. And so that we will be able to comfort those who are in affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. So I know that for sure you, you, all of those who have made prayer shows have been comforted by God and so the comfort that he's given you is going back out and comforting others and especially in your prayers your prayers mean something to God tears they mean something to God they do um, it's like a fragrant aroma, aroma incense prayers are to God it talks about that in revelations and then you remember that little Psalm 23, you remember that it talks about your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And who's the comforter? It's the Holy Spirit. And so the comforter is inside of us, comforting us. And so through that, through Jesus, through us, comforts other people. Now, we have exactly 80 prayer shows here today. 
and we're going to do a blessing in a minute, but I want to tell you a story about this is yesterday, okay? This is a yesterday story. So it's very um, relevant and very new. Um, a gentleman at the care center, he had, um, in the past, he had a box of yarn that he gave to the prayer shawl ministry. And so now, um, his loved one is there at the care center and is benefited by a prayer shawl. And it wasn't just, at the beginning, he had it at the feet and said, said, no, 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 we have to move it up. So he had to move it up, 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 close as he could get to right here on the patient. And so it brought meaning to him and it brought even more meaning because he actually was a participant in giving the yarn that maybe, we don't know for sure, that maybe even that prayer shawl was made from some of his yarn. I don't know that. We don't know. He didn't know. But we know that the prayers in the prayer shawls that you have prayed, they bring meaning. They bring meaning. They bring life. God's word um, in John 17, it talks about that. He says, this is eternal life, to know him. And then in John 6, 63, he talks about Jesus. He says, my words are spirit and are life. And so when you're praying God's word and you're praying for people, spirit and life, and spirit, it doesn't have time or space. So my prayers, they don't have time or space. It's not like just for this, in this moment. When I'm praying, it's, it goes on. It's when your prayers, you're praying for people that you don't even know, those prayers mean something. Every prayer shawl, every prayer means something to the person that's receiving it. Whether we realize it or not, John and I know when we give out a prayer shawl, for some reason, they are, it's the right color that they want it. It's the right shape. It's beautiful to them. And the prayers that were in that prayer shawl mean something for that family. And even now, I just can't tell you um, even at Red Banks, the families that I talk to right now and over the past six months, it's been devastating for some of them. And the grief that they are going through is deeper than you and I will ever know. And so these prayer shawls, they bring comfort, God's comfort through you to the patients and the families. You just don't, we don't realize how much that means to them. The grief is deep. But you see, God's comfort is bigger than that. And he turns our mourning into dancing. And so this morning, we're going to pray blessings over these that are here. So if you want to, you pray with me too while you're there. And so, because remember, the Spirit has no time and space, even where you are right now. And so we're going to pray, and we're going to bless these right here. So let's just pray. Father, we just come to you right now, Lord Jesus, and we thank you for these prayer shawls. We thank you for the prayers that go up, Lord Jesus, to you. And we know that they are a fragrant aroma to you. And so I pray right now for these prayer shawls. I pray your blessings on them as they go out and the prayers go out for the families and the patients that need them right now, Lord Jesus. So we thank you for that, that you are ministering to them through these ladies, and I pray for the ladies that have made them. I pray for their families. I pray for them. I pray for their hands as they're making them. And I pray for um, their afflictions, their grief. I pray that you would minister to the ladies that have made these. And I pray you watch over them, cover them with your wings, Lord Jesus, right now. And I pray that your love goes out to them and then goes through them to other people, and especially through these prayer shawls. And so we thank you for that. We thank you for your love, that you love us so much, Lord Jesus. And so we give you praise today for what you're doing through us, through the ladies, and how these prayer shawls will bless patients and families here. And so we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen.
Hi, I'm John Brumfield, Chaplain and Director of Social Services with St. Anthony's Hospice. Just a few short hours after Thomas and I got together to produce this video came the news that Mary Hudnall had passed away. Mary was a longtime supporter and very avid and prolific um, prayer shawl partner for St. Anthony's and for others in the community, and her death is going to leave a huge hole. I had the privilege not long ago of sitting down with Mary and during that visit she asked if I could take some prayer shawls with me uh, back to the office. Well, I was expecting about four or five and what she gave me literally filled the back seat of my car. What a blessing that was and Mary was such a blessing to people that she never even met and there are many, many folks who are going to be touched because of her generosity and her using her uh, wonderful hands and her skills. Folks, we want you to know that as we pray for Mary's family, we're also praying for you, that we understand that you have lost a friend and we know that the pain is real and very deep. So please know that you are in our thoughts and you are in our prayers as you go through this time. We are gonna miss Miss Mary and we definitely know how much she meant to you all. May God bless you as you continue to serve him through this very important ministry. And thank you very much. Bye-bye.